Hello, my name is Joe Steinfeld. I'm a Senior Advisory Solution Architect within our IT Transformation Business Unit here at ServiceNow. And here to talk to you around the Service Graph Connectors versus Discovery as an overall CMDB population strategy and when one should be used versus the other and things to be considered as you do so. But first, let me talk around the CMDB and that the investment ServiceNow has made over the many years and releases to really become that digital foundation to drive business outcomes. And we've even gone so far as to come out with a service modeling architecture known as the Common Services Data Model so that we get prescriptive guidance for customers of how do you model data in the CMDB to drive the outcomes that you see here whether that's on the operations side and IT operations, security side, risk, as well as the planning, the business management side of the house, as well as the IT service management. But one of the things we see is customers start to adopt newer agile methodologies for bringing products and services to market, like DevOps or site reliability engineering, very agile ways of doing that that we didn't have all the data in the CMDB to continue to provide that out insight and outcomes. And that was the genesis of what we call Service Graph. So Service Graph, first of all, it's not a product, anything you'd buy. Service Graph itself is a strategy to provide that next gen system of record across for digital products and services across the platform to give customers that insight in the outcomes they're looking for. So it includes data coming from the CMDB, but also would contain data not typically in a CMDB, such as configuration data coming from uh, config tools to build the environment, like Chef, Puppet, Ansible, for example, even Terraform, or tools used in the, the CI-CD process, such as code repositories that capture the changes in the code because that visibility is needed in a lot of different areas as you start to use these agile automated ways of delivering services. So a good example, like in DevOps, being able to understand whether application updates, code changes, config changes are impacting performance with traceability back to specific teams and technical changes. Or even another one in, in DevOps, being able to proactively manage change within the CICD pipeline to find problems before they get pushed into production. And then even on the business side of the house, being able to really have a complete cost picture that's associated with delivering a service, both human technology, both in dollars and in time. So those are some of the outcomes that Service Graph will provide. And you'll start to see this rolled out, the strategy rolled out over the next few releases of ServiceNow. But let's look at the first thing that was delivered as a part of that service graph strategy and that is specifically the connectors the connectors allow us to bring data in from third-party sources and you can see many of them here that many companies may already have in their enterprise and we often hear that when and when talking with customers can we leverage data from Qualys can, or big fix or dynatrace right but in the past bringing that data in is hard they often didn't bring data in to populate the right CI classes, create the right relationships. And often if you're bringing in data from multiple sources, it was creating duplicates. So it was, it was conflicting with other data that's already being brought in either discovery or another tool. So customers asked us to help them solve this specific problem so they can have a holistic CMDB population strategy. And that was again, the genesis of the service graph connectors. So the connectors themselves are built certified integrations from external tools that bring data in compliant with the common service data model uh, strategy and architecture there so that the right tables get populated with the right relationships so that you can get the, the business outcomes you're looking for and you don't have to worry about, hey, do I have duplicates? Is my seem to be corrupt? So that was the genesis of the connectors, and you'll see a lot of the connectors here uh, via our, our first release in September of this year, and then you'll see more coming over the next several releases. But we always get asked, I've got discovery, I've got connectors, when should I use one over the other? And that's what I'm really here to talk about. 
is the things that should be considered as you start to put together a CMDB population strategy. Should I bring that data in via the connectors and or discovery? And most of the time, when you're talking data center, for example, we see a combination of both at most customers. But let's get into some of these things that you need to consider. First of all, let's talk about discovery for populating the CMDB. Discovery has been purposely built over many years. I think it came out originally in 2007. And its purpose is populating that CMDB with data center assets. And I want to clarify that data center specific assets there. And making sure the right CMDB classes along with the right relationships are created so that you can have a healthy CMDB. And as you look at that, one of the big things to consider as you, you put together this population strategy is that it discovery gives you that one stop from the infrastructure item being discovered in the CMDB itself. So you know that data is accurate. So if we start looking at some of the advantages of doing this is direct population from the infrastructure to prevent duplicates. And it also makes sure that data was accurate at that time of discovery. Data is updated in a timely fashion. So we run discovery, we pull back the data, the relationships, we populate the CMDB. There's an updated time there. You know at that time of date, that's actually when we pulled that data from that endpoint. So again, you know that data is up to date. Discovery purpose built on bringing relationships into the CMDB. So again, making sure that you have that your relationships between the CIs the patterns that Discovery uses to discover the infrastructure are easily customizable to pick up new attributes, create new relationships, or even discover new technologies that may exist in the uh, enterprise. Now let's talk about service graph connectors for CMDB population. So you can see a lot of these different tools have data to drive their specific outcomes. A good example of that is System Center. System Center usually manages endpoints, so it has data around them, what, what software is installed, for example, what policies are set. Again, it's very focused. It collects data to drive its specific outcomes. Dynatrace is another example there, being able to, to understand the modeling of an application and the transaction path that transactions take, and it provides that visibility to help monitor the health of an application. But a lot of times these tools don't have all the data that you need. Also, there's a two-step process for bringing this in. First of all, those tools are gonna to bring data into their management database. SCCM is gonna bring data into a SQL Server database and keep it there. And then we're gonna pull data from that database via the service graph to connectors into the CMDB. So this is a two-step process. So data isn't directly populated there. And things to be wary of or cautions there is the data in the tool may not be current. Again, we're pulling the latest data in from the repository, again, SQL Server for SCCM is a good example. And those agents on those endpoints may not have reported in recently. So again, that data may be stale or not as current as it should be. Data may be duplicative. Again, we don't control the data in those external repositories. So if it's not well managed, you may have duplicates there. And again, those duplicates would come down into ServiceNow. And then data might not be complete to drive the outcome needed. A good example, I'm looking to populate a CMDB just with system center, a big fixed data that just doesn't have relationships on how things are related to each other in the infrastructure. And the reason it doesn't have it is it doesn't need that data to drive its specific outcomes. So one thing you need to keep in mind is that whatever data I'm going to be pulling from, does it have all the right CIs as well as relationships to drive the outcomes I'm looking for from my CMDB. One of the advantages they do have though is leveraging existing data. They're out there in the enterprise, they're doing things, SCCM's managing endpoints, 
data dogs monitoring the environment, Dynatrace is monitoring the applications. So that data already exists there. Why not leverage it to augment the visibility and provide a more comprehensive CMDB? And lastly, back to that last point, they may have data, discovery does not. So a lot of times what we see is that discovery is a primary source for data center type assets, and then these service graph connectors or augmented data to provide additional visibility for things discovery might not capture. So as we engage with customers, the next question usually comes in, okay, well, what should be my population strategy for the CMDB? And the next two slides will give you an idea of, of tools that should be considered when putting together that strategy. First of all, when you're looking at the, the different types of data that I'm going to have, whether it's service info, end user compute, software, IoT info, look at tools that provide complete coverage in those areas. So for server info, discovery, service mapping, for example, endpoint solutions like Tanium Big Fix may provide some good server info, as well as APM tools like Dynatrace as a good example. But then in the user compute, ServiceNow Discovery really not geared to, to capture laptops, desktops, whereas device management and point management solutions. So Jamf, SCCM, Tamium, Big Fix, really good for managing those components and have a full breadth of the, the data you need. So those are the things to be considered depending on the data you're looking to capture in the CMDB. You know, which tools have the most complete data ought to be considered. But beyond that, tools that we see as being a primary or a supplemental source for populating the CMDB to drive specific outcomes, you'll see some of them on this slide here. So for example, if a customer came to us and said, hey, I need to, to really make sure my CMDB is complete both from on-premise as well as my cloud resources. Our recommendation is discovery purpose-built for both discovering on-premise and cloud resources, not only from a, a CI attribute standpoint, but the relationships between those. And then looking at leveraging any one of the tools, depending on how they're used within the enterprise, as supplemental information, depending on the data needed to answer very specific outcomes. Again, the big thing with the CMDB, collect minimal viable data there, to drive the outcomes you're looking to provide. Then for another example, CMDB population for end user compute. ServiceNow Discovery, not a good resource for that. It's agentless. It uses credentials on that based on a scheduled basis. And catching endpoints that are on and off the network is very hard to do and be very hit or miss. So it wouldn't really provide a complete picture there. But if you look at endpoint management solutions like Jam, FigFix, SCCM that have agents on there and that are monitoring and managing those endpoints, those are good uh, solutions there. And from an end user compute, you really don't care so much about the relationships, but it's more about capturing the asset information. So primary sources would be device or endpoint management solutions, and then using discovery or maybe an IoT a tool like Armis to supplement that information. So again, this isn't answer all the questions, but get you things to consider as you start to put together your CMDB population strategy. And then again, another tool uh, in your arsenal to be able to provide a, the most comprehensive CMDB is the service graph connectors in conjunction along with discovery and service mapping. Thank you.